Jeff Moss is one of the world's leading cybersecurity experts. This American is the founder of the world's largest digital security conferences, DEFCON and Black Hat. In 2018, he launches a Chinese edition of DEFCON, a symbol of the meteoric rise of cyberspace in China. Five, six years ago, the president goes on TV and says that cybersecurity for China is critical to the future success of the country because the future is connected, the future is internet. And if you're going to be successful, you have to be able to protect it. And so security people are critical to the future of China's economy. Overnight, universities started offering information security. Companies were scrambling to find hackers and security people. So they went from obscurity doing their passion to being in demand. China's first hackers, who have fallen in line, are contributing to the country's incredible rise. China is becoming the world's second largest economy. Their next goal, to be number one. China is deploying its cyber force to surpass the United States. Its strategy, steal industrial secrets from their biggest companies. At least, that's what American officials claim. I'm John Carlin, and I served most of my career at the Justice Department. When I was a prosecutor, I went to a, a secure facility. I still remember going on, on the trip where there was a task force housed of both law enforcement and intelligence, and there was a giant jumbotron screen in the background, the size of a, a, a movie theater type screen. And they were tracking in real time what China, what Chinese threat actors in particular were doing to US companies. And they'd steal the research and development, the intellectual property, the, the trade negotiation strategies from that company, and we'd watch it go back out of the United States and hop back to, to China. So we, we decided to have a new strategy. This new US strategy is offensive and public. It's announced at a Department of Justice press conference with strong backing. Today we are announcing an indictment against five officers of the Chinese People's Liberation Army for serious cybersecurity breaches against six American victim companies. We allege that members of Unit 61398 conspired to hack into computers of six U.S. victims to steal information that would provide an economic advantage to the victim's competitors. The U.S. doesn't only single out the Chinese military unit as responsible for the hacks, it goes one step further. For the first time, we are exposing the faces and names behind the keyboards in Shanghai used to steal from American businesses. At the FBI initiative, wanted notices, usually reserved for America's worst enemies, are published with the names and faces of Chinese hackers. Where are you expecting the wanted posters? Yeah, uh, no, I was not expecting. <laughs> I was not expecting the uh, the wanted uh, the wanted posters, and I'm not sure I was uh, in favor of it at, at the time. Uh, it, it, it was concerned they were doing. In retrospect, I think it was a good it was a good call for a couple of reasons. One, figuring out who did it, and not just generally that it's coming from Chinese military intelligence by face, by name who's sitting behind the keyboard, whose fingers are they? Number two, make that public. Don't keep it in the shadows anymore. And finally, number three, impose consequences so that this is not cost-free to ultimately change the behavior. And I think that came as quite a big shock 
uh, to the Chinese leadership because I don't think they thought um, that kind of attribution would be possible. That, that really did give them pause for thought. The Chinese state is forced to make concessions. In 2015, China and the US pledged to stop using their digital weapons to steal trade secrets. Good afternoon, everybody. Please have a seat. China will fight against the threat, including the online attacks on the internet and the hacking of online communication. If there is any concern on this matter, we can express it through existing channels. We have agreed that neither the U.S. or the Chinese government will conduct or knowingly support cyber-enabled theft of intellectual property including trade secrets or other confidential business information for commercial advantage. I raised once again our very serious concerns about growing cyber threats to American companies and American citizens. I indicated that it has to stop. The United States government does not engage in cyber economic espionage for commercial gain. The United States, who called for this meeting, is in fact itself involved in spying scandals. For the past two years, whistleblower Edward Snowden's revelations on the widespread U.S. surveillance of citizens, businesses and politicians have shamed the Obama administration. From a European perspective, it's very hard to, to see the difference between uh, Chinese hack uh, targeting big companies and uh, U.S. intelligence hack. From the National Security Agency, there are, it is illegal, right, to use government resources for economic reasons, right? Even if it's to support the biggest American company or for whatever reason, that's illegal, right? And that line doesn't necessarily exist, you know, within, sort of, for example, some European countries' intelligence services, right? And it certainly doesn't exist within the Chinese intelligence services. Did the attacks stop after this agreement? No. <laughs> Ultimately, it was a, a point in time, right? And it was a great discussion point, but we had no means of enforcing the agreement itself. The agreement of the two leaders was not respected in reality. The attacks continued, and so did American accusations, Morning, always Harvard, with media Western attention. The Southern District of New York. Today, we announced charges against two Chinese hackers, Zhu Hua and John Shulong. The defendants' hacking campaigns also targeted U.S. government agencies, including the laboratories of NASA, the United States Department of Energy, and the U.S. Navy. I'm here to announce the indictment of Chinese military hackers, specifically four members of the Chinese People's Liberation Army for breaking into the computer systems of the credit reporting agency Equifax, and for stealing the sensitive personal information of nearly half of all American citizens. Targeted industries included high-tech manufacturing, medical device, civil and industrial engineering, business, educational, and gaming software, solar energy, pharmaceuticals, and defense. Some days, it seems like a never-ending battle. From 2014 to mid-2021, 35 individuals were indicted for their involvement in Chinese cyber espionage operations. Among them are hackers, senior military officers, field agents, recruiters, and informers. Well, as long as these people remain in China, they're not within uh you know, they're not within reach. I mean, there have been cases where, you know, Chinese involved in cyber espionage have been um, arrested outside China uh, and prosecuted. Uh, it has happened. Um, but uh, the simple fact is that those responsible for these operations, as long as they don't leave China, um, are not at risk. Of the 35 defendants, only three have been arrested. Two are awaiting extradition to the United States from Malaysia, while only one has actually been convicted. 
after 18 months in U.S. custody, he returned to China, free. We, try to t we can't take them into custody, try them in a court of law, and lock them up. Not today, anyway. But one day, these criminals will slip up, and when they do, we'll be there. In Beijing, how does Eagle, the patriotic ex-hacker, react to these U.S. charges? What do you think of the way uh, how the, the, the U.S. portrayal the Chinese hackers? Uh, 